Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be all about work experience aimed for those of you in year 11 or year 12, sitting at GCSEs or sitting the first year of your A-levels to help you understand my journey of getting work experience and what I did with the work experience I got. The work experience is super important for showing universities that you're interested in the subject, particularly if you're applying to the top universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, Harvard, it's so important that you show a deep appreciation for the subjects that you wish to study. There's no better opportunity to begin this than when you're 15, 16 or 17. And so I'm currently fourth year studying medicine here at Cambridge. Technically I'm also studying engineering, but I'll explain that another time. So when I was 15, I realized I wanted to do medicine. Having spoken to a few friends of mine, a few teachers of mine, but also just having, you know, juggled between banking and medicine, I eventually chose medicine. I then thought, right, my school teachers are harping on about work experience. How on earth do I get work experience? My parents knew a few doctors, but not well enough for me to go and ask them simply, can I have some work experience? A few friends of mine at school, their parents were doctors, very big doctors in fact, and so for them it was far easier. How can I get the experiences that I want to show universities when I apply in a few years time that I was really keen about medicine? So I think I can split this up into three main sections, the research part of it, the application part of it, but also the overall keenness required to get what I got. Some of you watching might be like, I don't have any resources, probably don't even have a work experience coordinator at school, which can help me. Well, if you're keen enough, then trust me, all of what I'm going to say is possible. So it's all about how you apply yourself, how you push yourself and keep finding things as hard as you can. And before you know it, you'll have fantastic opportunities. So going back, the research stage. So I was thinking to myself, what hospitals are nearby me? And where have past students in my school gone before? Because at my school, quite a few boys every year went on to study medicine. And so I went to the work experience coordinator and I asked her, I don't really want contacts because I'm pretty sure they might be personal. Could you tell me roughly which hospitals and which departments have past students gone and how they went applying for it? So this lady, the work experience coordinator, looked up the information and she gave me a few different hospitals. I then went on to research these hospitals. I looked up the work experience coordinators. I looked up the you know physicians and the surgeons I liked the look of at those hospitals before beginning to email them. So this research part was really important because I think I made a spreadsheet or something where I put the person's name, their sort of field of medicine, their speciality, and their contact details. And also like a few key things that they were specializing in. So if it's a surgeon, you know, were they particularly good at spinal surgery or were they particularly good at removing tumors, deep tumors from the head. So after that, I began emailing people. I'm pretty sure I sent out around 20 different emails and only roughly 15% actually replied to me, 85% didn't even respond. So 15%, what, that's three or four replied to me. A few of them were like, yes, we could accommodate you. Others were like, well, maybe not apply at a different time. So for those people who said tentatively yes, I was immediately very kind. The initial email I'd sent, I'd asked them for work experience very politely for a period of time. I said between this date and this other date, maybe like a two month gap, I've got this free time. Whatever time in between that, please try and accommodate me. So this initial, flexibility that I gave them would have made it far easier for them to offer me a placement than if I had emailed them saying I can only make the specific week of the specific month of the year can you offer me work experience at the end of the day I was going to them for something and so I had to make it as easy as possible for them to give it to me those three four emails that responded to me were like right we've got these various dates um, and so yes I discussed with them what I wanted and which departments I wanted. And before I knew it, I had some placements organized. Once they said yes to that, they sent me some paperwork. I got my school teachers to fill it in, sent it back, all these like safety checks and all. It's very important in medicine to check all these things. And so I was like, fair enough, a lot of paperwork, but just get it done. A few of my friends have also got offers from, you know, work experience uh, coordinators at hospitals. They didn't even respond with the paperwork. But then later went on to complain that they hadn't got placements. And I was thinking, well, you didn't even bother sending back the paperwork they asked for, so you can't really blame them for it. Yes, I went on. Uh, my first placement in year 11 was at a respiratory and elderly unit at a local hospital in London. Uh, and I went with a friend of mine um, who actually didn't end up doing medicine. He did law at Cambridge. So yep, he changed his mind um, and he's now working in the city. And my second placement was in the accident and emergency department of also another local hospital. And then the year after I went on to do work experience in an MRI unit at a hospital or at one of the hospitals of Imperial College London, Hammersmith Hospital, and I met a fantastic cardiologist from Oxford there, with whom I think I still keep in touch. Also, I went to witness some neurosurgery at St George's in London, and St George's is one of the biggest trauma centres in South London. Funny thing about the St George's placement, so when I was a kid applying for medicine, Henry Marsh, a neurosurgeon, which a lot of you might know, he's written a book, Do No Harm, was working at St George's. That was his hospital that he'd worked for for many years. So I thought I'd try my luck and sent Henry Marsh an email in January, and Henry Marsh had responded to me saying, Sen, if you come in the next two weeks, you can do work experience with me. 
because I'm retiring in two weeks. And this was in the middle of term time, and so I really had no option but to say to him, Dear Mr. Henry Marsh, thank you so, so much for responding firstly, but also for offering me this wonderful opportunity. But due to school constraints, I can't make it. He was so, so kind in offering me the opportunity to still come later on in the year, in my summer holidays, to shadow the rest of his team. In July of that year, I went to St. George's, the Atkinson Morley Wing, filled with some of the nicest nurses and neurosurgeons I've ever met. And I spent a week there witnessing some pretty, pretty major surgery. Not only did I get to see the wonderful equipment they used, I also saw the great bedside manner all those doctors had. And it really was a wonderful experience. But yes, although I emailed Henry Marsh, I never really got to meet him. I worked under one of his trainees. And um, it turns out Henry Marsh had even gone to my school to give a talk. And I couldn't make that either. So it's a real shame I haven't yet met him but I'd love to meet him one day. He's a wonderful surgeon, and once again, read his book, Do No Harm. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. So well written, and I'm sure all of you will love it. Moving on though, I also did a placement at Oxford. I went to this lecture that a family friend invited us to, and at this lecture, I met this wonderful upper GI surgeon, renowned in the country for the operations that he does. And so I thought, well, <laughs> let's see if I can get some work experience from him. So I did it. at the end of the lecture, I sort of you know, timidly went up to the front, and asked him, could I have your email? Your work sounds wonderful. I really enjoyed your talk. Could I do some work experience? Now, when I asked him, I was a bit like, is this even going to work? Because I lived in London and he worked in Oxford. But that was the beginning of a wonderful journey. So he said yes and very quickly organized me some work experience. And so a few months later, in the year of the same summer that I spent at St. George's in the neurosurgery ward, I went to Oxford. Now, because I was living in London, I was thinking about getting some accommodation at Oxford for that week but accommodation was going for about two or three hundred pounds a night. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to spend that sort of money just for a work experience placement. So I pulled myself together and I traveled to Oxford every single day and back from London. For those of you who don't know, that's a two and a half hour journey each way. And so when the surgeon told me that I had to be there for ward rounds for nine o'clock, that meant I had to leave London on the first train towards Oxford at about 5.30. I'd get into Oxford for about 7.30. I'd then have to take the bus or like the cab or walk all the way to the hospital, the Churchill Hospital. And um, yeah, slightly warm, slightly sweaty sometimes, but I always made it. And remember, this was in the middle of summer, so the mornings are really cold, but then it warmed up in the day really, really quickly. I'd then leave the hospital about four or five o'clock to then get back into London for seven, eight o'clock. Sleep, get up at five o'clock, then go again to Oxford the next day. So that was another wonderful placement that I had. Five days watching upper GI surgery and truly inspiring. So all these wonderful placements I had, wouldn't have arisen if it wasn't for that third point I mentioned earlier, keenness. If I hadn't been enthusiastic about what I wanted to do and pursuing these placements, I would have been nowhere near achieving them. I hope discussing this has been useful to you guys. Although I wanted it to be structured, I think it's ended up being a bit of a rant and a bit of a, an unstructured bit of talk. Three main sections. Do your research. Make sure your CV is 